Welcome to the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast, where we explore the spirituality of the Christian child through the method of Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I am your host, Carrie Mecki Lozano, and today, Julie Baltuska shares with us about her pilgrimage to the Holy Land and how it really moved her spiritually to stand where Jesus stood and see what he saw and touch what he touched. Throughout her trip, she took many, many pictures, and she was able to bring those pictures back to her atrium and share them with the children as they talked about the city of Jerusalem or the land of Israel. She was able to show them, look, this is a real place. You can visit there. She later turned these pictures into three beautiful picture books that can be used in atria everywhere. So if you would like to purchase those books, look in the show notes. I will show you where you can purchase them. She also talks to us about how in the method of catechesis of the Good Shepherd, we use geography to aid us in our understanding of the incarnation of Jesus in his full humanity in a place and in a time. I hope you enjoy. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to introduce you to my friend, Julie Baltuska. Julie, would you like to say hi to everybody? Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> Julie, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and your involvement in Catechesis of the Good Shepherd? Sure. I'm, uh, I'm here in Kansas. I'm a mother of uh, six sons and a daughter. My husband and I have uh, nine grandchildren so far, uh, and I'm pretty much live and breathe and dream catechesis of the Good Shepherd in every spare moment. <laughs> um, my dear friend, Marilee Quinn, introduced me to the catechesis in, I think it was about 1993, when we had our first formal course here in 95 uh, with Sister Sheila Sente. And I've been working uh, with the children ever since then for about 25 years. We've invited, um, Wow. we've had Rebecca and uh, Donna Turner and, um, and Anna Hurdle here a lot in Kansas, uh, helping us to get going. I became a formation leader in the level three um, in 2008, and I've also done level two formation uh, before that, but I can't remember the year. And I work pretty exclusively with nine to 12 year olds in the hmm. level three. And informing those catechists for that for that age child, um, I still assist in a level two first communion preparation. But mm -hmm. the sessions that I facilitate with the children are weekly. I, I facilitate two two sessions with the nine to twelve year old children. It's just my it's my favorite age group, and it's my favorite uh, content mm. of Kerygma. I love 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 Old Testament. And I love typology. Typology feeds my faith mm -hmm. more than anything. And so it's a really, really good fit for me. That's beautiful. Thank you for 25 years of service, 25 plus years of service. That's so beautiful. And all my pleasure. Trust me. <laughs> Isn't that usually how it works? Our gift that feeds ourselves. Yes. Yes. It's, it's my spiritual food. Mm -hmm. Level three is so beautiful. I love like you said, it's just so big. I always tell people, man, level three is, there's so much beautiful materials and work in level three that you could do it for six years easy. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It has a, a lot to do with the Jewish people, too. There's a lot of that content in there, which I, I dearly love as well. Mm -hmm. I took a class, uh, I took several classes from a Jewish rabbi when I was um, at the university. Rockhurst University in Kansas City, um, gosh, ages and ages ago. And those mm -hmm. were my favorite classes, his Old Testament classes. And so that's where I fell in love, I think, with the Jewish people in the Old Testament. What a gift. Yes, it has been. What a gift. And then now you're able to bring that into the atrium. Mm -hmm. And then you also have these beautiful books that you have shared with us on the land of Israel and the regions of Israel and everything. This has been such a gift. I can't wait to talk to you about them. But first, tell us about your trip to the Holy Land. What came about that brought you to go on this trip? And tell us about your trip. Well, I can't remember when, I think, you know, when that movie came out and people started talking about bucket lists. Mm -hmm. 
they would always ask you what's on your bucket list. And uh, that was just about the time that I felt this really strong desire to go there. And I told my husband, you know, this is the only thing on my bucket list. I don't want to go anywhere else until I've been to Israel. And about that same time, a a woman from our parish uh, runs a travel agency. And she teamed up with a ministry from the archdiocese called the School of Faith. And these are men who came from Steubenville to our archdiocese, and their ministry is mainly to to serve the faith of the adults in the archdiocese. And so they had a dream to start taking Mm -hmm. adults over on pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And Trudy, the, the travel agent, also had this dream. And so it's about the same time that I started having this dream. So I was the in the we were in the first group to go over in in 2011. I went with my husband and my mom and my sister and, and about 86 other people. Wow, 86 other people. Yes. That's a huge group. It, it is huge. But you know, I, I was just seeing, I was following Patrick Madrid online and he's over there right now with a group of 320. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow. Pretty small group compared to his, but but it was it was manageable and it was very, very well done. They did a, a terrific job of giving us a teaching at each site. Mm. Uh, that was very they their goal was for us to encounter Jesus in the Holy Land mm. and, and they were very successful at that. I can only imagine what that must have been like to walk in the places where Jesus walked and and touch places that Jesus touched, like, oh, what was that like for you? Oh, it was amazing. It was very profound, very exciting for me. Um, It's it's hard to describe. It's hard to find words for it. Everywhere I went, I wanted to get down on my knees and just kiss the ground. Mm. And in some places, you can do that. Um, Some of the, the most holy places. I remember the very first morning when we got on the bus and started to go places, I looked out the bus window and realized, oh my gosh, that's the Mount of Olives. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I couldn't, I had to pinch myself. I couldn't believe I was here and I was just overtaken with how beautiful it was. It was just so exciting. So there's a little bit of incredulity that you have to work through in all those places. You're just pinching yourself thinking, am I really here? Yeah. Yeah. And then it just fills you with reverence and gratitude. One of the places that uh, I was a little bit intimidated to go, I was kind of dreading going to Calvary because I was fearful that it would be too heavy for my heart and create all this sadness within me. But when I touched the ground there where the cross stood, there's an altar built over that very spot. And you get down on your knees and crawl under the altar. And they have this little tube. Mm. And you put your arm down the tube and you touch the ground right mm. where the cross stood. Oh, wow. <laughs> and when I did that, I was, I was just completely overwhelmed with gratitude. Nothing but gratitude just flooded my heart. So it wasn't uh, sadness at all. And now it's one of my favorite memories, my favorite places. But just all of the places, sailing on the Sea of Galilee, putting my feet in the Jordan River, Mm -hmm. being in in the place where God entered the world in the Grotto of the Annunciation, where he became flesh in Mary's womb. Very, very overwhelming. Of course, probably the highlight of the whole trip was praying the Mass in the tomb of the resurrection, inside the tomb uh, where Christ rose from the dead. Oh, wow. Talk about a topographic moment there Yeah, you know, with typology and everything oh, to have yeah. a mass right there in the Tomb of the Resurrection. Wow, that's really beautiful. It, it's a very small area, about the size of a closet, and about five or six adults can fit in there at one time. They placed a marble slab over the the stone slab where his body lay because so many tourists throughout the centuries have been chipping off little pieces of that stone to take home. Oh, wow. So they finally put a marble slab over that, and that is the altar. So the altar is right over the slab of stone where Jesus' body lay and where it rose. Sounds like there's like a chapel or an altar in every one of these significant places. Oh, yes. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, how beautiful. 
That's so beautiful. Man, it makes me want to go so bad. How fun would it be? We should make like a catechesis of the Good Shepherd pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> We've talked about that ever since I came back. Yeah. Getting a group of nothing but catechists to go over. Oh, my goodness. So what year did you go over there again? 2011. Okay. So it was after your journey with Catechies of the Good Shepherd. Yes. So is that what inspired you then to take the pictures for the books? I'm, I'm kind of crazy about taking pictures everywhere I go. Not that I'm that, that great of a photographer, but I, I did have a good camera and I love, I love taking pictures. So no matter where I go, I take tons of pictures. I think that it was in my mind, seeing it through the eyes of the children as mm-hmm. I was there, wanting to bring it back home to show them. I think that was somewhere in my mind, but I I don't remember. It wasn't until I had been home for a little while and was back in the atrium with the children. I I was mainly in the level two at the time. And we just kept talking about all these things. And I just kept wanting to show them my pictures, uh, these places that we were talking about because I had been there. So that's when I, I had made these books before just for my own personal memories of my trips on a, on just a website where you download Mm -hmm. your photographs and then they, and you arrange them how you want them in a book. And then they send you the book through the mail. So I, I just got a desire to do that for the children. So I made the land of Israel book first with a little bit of text to explain under the pictures, what they were looking at. It was well received by catechists and by the children in the atrium. Mm -hmm. In just your atrium in Kansas City, you, it was just the one copy? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. And so I went on to make the City of Jerusalem book uh, next because in the level two, that's, that's one of the favorite works of that aged child mm-hmm. to walk through the passion of Jesus with the, with the model of the City of Jerusalem. Again, I just wanted them to be able to see what that looks like, what that place looks like, the Garden of Olives where he was arrested. For them not to have to imagine what that looks like, but just see a picture of that. I made that book and I intentionally arranged the pictures to kind of sync with that presentation. So with that presentation, you start out by talking about the walls around the city. So the first picture that you see in that book is the walls of the city of Jerusalem. And it walks through the passion then um, in that order all the way to the tomb of the resurrection. I was gifted that book, the City of Jerusalem book, a few years uh, back, and okay. I used that exactly for that in, in that way. With whenever I did Great. the City of Jerusalem presentation, um, the children were mm-hmm. then encouraged to look at the book to see the actual pictures, and it was such a gift. Yes. To them. Then later on, um, I got the desire to simplify the Land of Israel book for the younger children. I wanted to redo it, make it a picture book for the youngest child. Uh, with no text, mm-hmm. hardly any text, just the names of the region. To go with the puzzle map in level one, maybe? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. So that, that smaller book I made was for them, yeah, to go with those geography materials so that they could see. So they, you know, when they pick up the region of the piece of the puzzle that's the region of Judea, then they can look in the book and see, well, what does that look like mm-hmm. if I went there? And the, the feedback that I get from the catechists, they, they come to me and say, boy, when I, I showed the children in my atrium your book, they, they had this reaction like, oh, you mean it's a real place? Mm. You mean I can go there? And just this joy of, of realizing. Yes. Oh, I love that. It solidifies to the child that, oh, so this is a real place and a real time that we're talking about here. So then... Yes. That means Jesus was a real person who walked yes. on a real place. That, wow. What that yeah. must do for the child's relationship with Jesus in that moment when they, they see his real humanity through the pictures in your books. Uh-huh. What a gift you have given us. So we want to proclaim him as a real historical person. He lived in this particular place in the world. He lived in this particular time in history. And, and children, the very, very young children, you know, who are not oriented well to time, they, they don't have a sense of past and future. Um, they're always living in the present moment. Mm-hmm. We want to give them that foundation um, that he is a real person. This is a real person that we're talking about. 
they're, they're, we, the books that we read to them and the, and the videos that they sit in front of, they're filled with so much fantasy and they, they're not at the point yet. They're, they're in this process of being able to um, uh, discern what's real and what's make-believe. And so, especially for the very young child, it's important that we make those uh, efforts to help them with that distinguished, no, no, this is a real person. This is a real place. He really lived here and he really lived then. Yeah. Almost the tangibility of Jesus. Yes. 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 It's not a, a fairy tale. Batman and those kind of things that they are surrounded right. by as well. Right. These are, look, this is a physical place and look, maybe, you know, Miss Julie or how fun would it be for their own catechist or somebody that they know to share a picture of maybe grandma went to the Holy land or something and to show a picture of them in those yes. places. Like, oh, yeah. I know her and she's real. So uh huh. how fun is that? Yes. I didn't think about that adds to it too. And also the, this incredible mystery of the incarnation. Mm-hmm. What a mystery. Adults have a hard time even comprehending what does it mean that God, who is outside of time, beyond time, outside of space, nothing can hold him, yet he humbles himself to come and live with us, to dwell with us in the confines of space and time, Mm -hmm. in human flesh. That's a mind-blowing mystery. I know it is for me, and I can never get to the to the bottom of it, it's um, children is, it, grasp it more easily. But like you say, God, God's method is has always been to reveal Himself in tangible, sensible, material things. Mm-hmm. All through history, He has always stooped low to be with us, showing Himself. And even mm-hmm. in Old Testament times, even before Jesus, in the fire of the burning bush. In the cloud and the and the fire in the desert with the with the Israelites, even in creation itself, he um, he stoops. Mm-hmm. And you know, Israel is the lowest place on earth. The Dead Sea is like thirteen hundred feet below sea level, and all the area surrounding it then is below sea sea level. And so, to think about that, he he not only stoops to become human, but he chooses the lowest place on the planet to live his life. It's, that's, that's educational in itself, just that thought. But even in the sacraments today it comes to us in those material elements, tangible things, the water and the oil, the bread and the wine. Mm-hmm. That could so easily be broken and dropped yes, and crumbled yes. and just the vulnerability that he's exposed himself to. I wonder if this is part of the emotions that you were feeling whenever you we're kneeling down at the Annunciation and touching the places that Jesus touched as you were, you were feeling emotionally this incomprehensible incarnation that was surrounding you in those moments. And you were actually getting to tangibly mm-hmm. touch the incarnation. Yes. What a gift to be able to touch, touch and see with my eyes and smell the smells and immerse myself in the land where he lived unbelievable gift. I highly recommend it to everyone. Please go there. (laughs) That's such a beautiful gift that you received. Well, what do you think for a child in the atrium? What do you think them knowing this, not just this, that Jesus was in a real place in a real time, but being able to say, oh, that's Jerusalem. Oh, that's the cynical oh, that's Judea, like being able to understand what those words are and what they mean. What do you think that that does for a child in their relationship with Jesus? For example, I think about the articles of the mass and, you know, we lift up the names, Chalice and Patton. And then I feel like the child has this deeper relationship with the mass and with those articles, they have now a actual relationship because they know what it's called. Yes. Yes. It gives them ownership, uh, makes them feel more at home knowing the names. I think of little babies and their joy when you just walk them around the house and name, name things. I think it has to do too with that human tendency to want to be oriented to the place where I find myself. And, and being able to name things makes me feel more at home in the place where I find myself. 
it gives me, it makes, it's familiar. It makes me more familiar. It makes that thing, that object more familiar. And then I, I truly have a sense of belonging here. So that when we, we mark significant places in, in Jesus's life with those names and, and with the pictures in the book, this is where he was born. This is where he died and rose from the dead. This is where he called the disciples uh, from their fishing boats to come and follow him. This is where he ate his last supper. If they, they have the language of the place, it draws them into a more intimate relationship, a deeper intimacy. Mm. So if I can give them a sensorial experience of, of the place, even, even beyond knowing the names of the places, um, as I try to do within with my books, they can see what it looks like, and it adds to their enjoyment and their delight of knowing him more deeply. Once again, it adds that tangible dimension. Mm-hmm. I've heard it said that the land, the land of Israel is called the fifth gospel. Oh. You ever heard that? No, I've never heard that before. Everybody who goes there agrees that they never, ever hear, they will never hear the readings at Mass in the same way again. Because they've been there, oh yeah, and now they don't have to use their creative imagination to imagine that place. They know exactly what that place looks like. They can imagine Jesus there. So there's a different relationship now that you have with those parables and scriptures, because you have tangible images in your head. Yes, that you've experienced to go with them, and so for the child, they Jesus is almost more tangible to them. Yes, everything. They learn through their senses. Uh, so anything that we can do to make it more tangible, more, mm-hmm. more real. Once again, back to reality. A- another really important thing, I think, is to lift up that Jesus was Jewish. I think especially in the level three, this, uh, it, of course, we give them that foundation even before level three. The youngest children, he lived in the land of the Israelites. He, li- he lived in the Jewish land, and he was Jewish. He had a Jewish mother, and I think that's so important. He he loved the temple. The temple was his father's house. He loved all the rituals, the Jewish religious rituals and, and feasts. His heritage is our heritage. Mm-hmm. The Jewish people are our brothers and sisters, our, our elder brothers and sisters. We would not even be here where we are without them. And so it gives us an added gratitude there, an added uh, appreciation. Mm -hmm. It's really important for ecumenism. It feeds that. Mm -hmm. It's it's good food for that ecumenical spirit, that appreciation of the Jewish people. Uh, So I I think that's important too. And I think going to the Holy Land Mm -hmm. increased my appreciation for them and my desire to even know more about them. And and that, my desire to know more about Jesus because he was Jewish. Right. More to understand more of his humanity when you understand a a huge part of what was, what was his life, which was his Jewishness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely feeds our faith. And and it it gets us farther along that road to that cosmic communion that we talk about so much in level three, all of us, just one sheepfold, all brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm all so uh, valuable to each other. I think that's a, a good reason to want to go to the Holy Land right there. Bring, help bring on Parisia. Yeah. Yes. And it is a very safe place to go. That you have, don't need to have any fears. Um, it's the safest place in the world, probably, as far as security goes. <laughs> and I, I, felt, I felt very safe there. And I was able to just totally immerse myself in the experience of just being there in those holy places and relishing those those moments. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Julie. You're welcome. And it's it's such a joy to be able to share that with the children in, in the books too. And it's I'm very grateful to the um, National Association to want to put them on their website and have them uh, more easily available to to Atria everywhere. Yes. So that they can be in the, the hands of the children. The children seem to really enjoy them. And that tangibility of Jesus right there in their hands, mm-hmm. his real humanity. Do you have a favorite book, Julie, between the three of them? Um, I think I'm most proud probably of the Regents book. Oh, the the one for the love of one children? For the, yeah, the little children. Why is that one your favorite? Oh, you know, I, I kind of struggle as a catechist with the essentiality. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm always challenging myself yes. now. Is this really essential? Is this does this really belong? And I think with the 
the Regents book, since it was the third one I had done, I was, I was more able to make it more essential Yeah, for the smallest that, child. That is true. This is definitely the most essential one. That is such a gift. I think my favorite is the city of Jerusalem, but that might be because it's the one that I've, I've worked with the most, uh -huh. but I love, like you said, how it just walks, the pictures walk through the whole presentation of the city of Jerusalem mm -hmm. and show you the, the real place for each of those moments that we lift up with the child. I just think that is so cool. And I have that one in the level three room. I'll have all, well, I have the two, the land of Israel and the, and the city of Jerusalem in the level three room. And that the level three children seem to really enjoy the, the city of mm -hmm. Jerusalem. But they're still in that stage where they just love working with the city of Jerusalem. And that book really speaks to them, those pictures. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It's one of my favorite materials. It's not one of my favorite materials to make. Right. <laughs> but it is one of my most favorite materials to use with the children. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Julie, for sharing your experiences with us and the gift of these books with us. You are truly a blessing to the work of Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. You're so welcome. It's my pleasure. It's, it was a pleasure to make them. It's a pleasure to get them in the hands of the children and the catechists. And I'm so happy that they're appreciated. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Carrie. Thank you so much for listening. As a special little treat, stay tuned for that very end of the episode. We have a song that you can use in your atrium with your children that is shared with us by our friends from Australia. If you are interested in purchasing one or all three of the geography books that we talked about in this episode, I have a link in the show notes that will take you to the CGS USA store where you could purchase those books for yourself, or maybe you would like to purchase them for the atria that you are involved with, for the children in your life. Um, you can go to that link to learn more. Lent is a beautiful time for us to discover or rediscover the geography of Israel, the land of Jerusalem, especially as we are getting closer and remembering Jesus's passion in Jerusalem. For our friends in the Northwest part of the United States, we will be having the Heart of the Child Art Exhibit and Lecture Series at Holy Family Parish in Kirkland, Washington on May 29th and May 30th, 2020. This exhibit offers a glimpse of where the mystery of God meets the mystery of the child. Their artwork is an intimate look at a hidden conversation between God and the beloved. We hope that you can join us. We would love for you to join us every other Wednesday, so please subscribe to the podcast. Also, help us get the word out there. Tell your friends. Uh, share it on social media. Whatever you could do to help us reach more people that we have this new podcast. You can leave a comment or a rating on the podcast. We read every single one, and they are tremendously helpful. Tell us what you think, your ideas, comments. You can also email us at cgs at cgsusa.org. You can keep up with the National Association of Catechesis of the Good Shepherd on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. I will put our, our names for each of those platforms down in the show notes. This podcast is sponsored by the United States Association of Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. We want to thank all contributing members of the association because you are making this podcast possible. If you want to know more about Catechesis of the Good Shepherd or to become a member, go to cgsusa.org. Thank you all for joining us this week. We will see you in two weeks. Go and fall more deeply in love with God. My name is Anne Diamond, and I am a formation leader living in Western Australia. One of the songs that we use when we are doing geography with our level one children is called Jesus Lived in Israel, written by one of our formation leaders many years ago because there didn't seem to be that much around that we could use for geography. She wrote the first part and I added the second part that I use when we are introducing the three cities to the children. And this is the song. 
Jesus lived in Israel, Israel, Israel. Jesus lived in Israel a long time ago. Jesus lives in my heart, my heart, my heart. Jesus lives in my heart right now. Mary lived in Nazareth, Nazareth, Nazareth. Mary lived in Nazareth a long time ago. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem a long time ago. Jesus died and rose in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Jesus died and rose in Jerusalem a long time ago. Jesus lives in my heart, my heart, my heart. Jesus lives in my heart right now.